Hi students, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about labour in the industrial era, both labour conditions and also labour action, tensions, um, organised labour uh, as we get deeper into this period. So as the cities grow, as the industry continues to grow, we've seen these huge corporations developing uh, railroads, steel, coal, all of these industries need workers. So we see a growing working class population in the growing American cities. The life of these workers was extremely difficult. The standard uh, practice was for six um, 10 hour days making up a work week um, in conditions that were often extremely dangerous. Uh, we find uh, women and children uh, working uh, in these uh, factories uh, or in these plants as well. By 1900, you have 2 million children who are also working 10, even 12 hour days. Um, and really that the industry has moved ahead of uh, society and social expectations for the time, that there, there are no regulations um, and that while there's a sense that women and children have always worked, um, the difference is that women and children up until this point had typically worked in the home where they were in familiar circumstances, where they would be protected. Um, as they step, begin to work more and more outside the home, they're more vulnerable to being abused or exploited. And these are problems that society is trying to deal with um, as it's changing so much because of the rapid growth of industry. Not just women and children, of course. This is a completely different way of working for most men as well. And we start to see that workers are starting to organize into movements to resist abuse and exploitation by their employers. Um, so groups like National Labor Union and the Knights of Labor um, advocate for higher wages, for an eight hour workday, uh, for a federal control of um, arbitration in labor disputes and um, for federal punishment for companies that employ immigrant workers who are often employed at lower wages as a way of defrauding um, both the immigrants themselves and American workers. As uh, the century goes on, we see that uh, labor working resistance to um, working resistance to abuse and exploitation uh, by their employers um, becomes more aggressive and becomes more violent. We see this in a series of uh, strikes. Um, the Homestead um, and Steel Strike, um, the Pullman Strike, these are some of the most famous uh, strikes, um, all of which in the end are broken by federal troops. And so typically, although these strikes reveal the discontent of the workers, they don't reveal a lot of change that's taking place, positive change that's taking place from the perspective of the workers. Typically, with all these strikes, um, the workers end up, um, and the unions that have organized the strikes, their power ends up being broken by the use of federal troops to come in and suppress the strikers, enable the factories to reopen again, and the constant availability of more labor, because you have a rising population and you have um, high rates of immigration. It's easy for employers to replace their employees with those they can force to work for less or those they can offer less. Also, as we come to the end of the 19th century, we start to find that anarchists and Marxists are starting to become more involved in these labor movements. Now, the anarchists and the Marxists, typically they're not working class people. Marx himself was, um, was, a, was a middle class um, theoretician. Um, so the anarchists and the Marxists typically are, are middle class uh, men and women who uh, want to agitate against uh, the capitalist system or the corporatist system that's developing in the United States at, at this time. Um, so it's not necessarily that they have 
the workers' rights um, as their number one priority. It's certainly a priority, but their priority is destroying the system. And so we see these strikes start to become much more violent and destructive. The Haymarket riots in Chicago in 1886, we have the first detonation of a terrorist bomb, um, which is used to attack police officers trying to break up a riot. And uh, so this is the first use of terror by anarchists and agitators in, in the United States in response to labor conditions um, in this industrial era.